Well, a decorating theme that I love in real life are the gnomes. And I know a lot of you guys love them too. So I've been wanting to bring you some gnome projects for a while. And I sat down last week and made a pattern so that we can make this Valentine gnome today. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy he is to make. Alright, so I wanted to start out by showing you what the pieces look like once they're cut out and removed from the mat. Now I would recommend if you're using the, the electronic cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette, that you take off like take off these four pieces, glue them together. Take off three these three, glue them together. That way you'll keep everything together. So let's talk about what all these pieces are and what layers they go to. So these are the, the back of the gnome. This is what is going to be built onto. There's four of these because four layers make it stronger. Obviously the beard, we have three sets of hands and they're, they're oriented so you can see which one goes where. So we're gonna have a stack of bodies, a stack of beards, two stacks of hands, one set going each way, have a stack of three hats, a stack of three hearts, three noses, and then there's two sets of three shoes over here or feet or whatever you wanna call them. So these will go into two sets. So I'm going to glue the first couple together on camera and then after that I'll turn the camera off and I'll do, get these all glued together. When I glue the larger pieces, like these, the beards, the hats, and probably the hearts, I'm going to set something like a jar of paint on them just to keep them nice and flat. That way I know they won't curve while they're drying. And this week I decided, since I'm running short on toothpicks and I really didn't want to go out in the cold, I am going to attempt to use my ball tool and see how the ball, the dotting tool works to apply glue. Um, we'll see how this goes. Because this I can clean off easier than I can the toothpick. And uh, I'm going through quite a few toothpicks lately. Come on, stand still. Line up as you go, line up each layer. I want to make sure that's as a line. The more time you take getting these put together nice and evenly and stacked nicely, the nicer your finished gnome will be. Now I'm hoping to do seasonal gnomes pretty much year round for the next year. Um, I've been wanting to do a gnome for a long time for the porch. And we'll probably, I'll probably adapt the pattern to a smaller gnome for in the house too, maybe some tabletop ones as time goes on. And you don't have to cover that entire surface. Leave some gaps, the glue will, as you put the paper together, the glue will flatten out and fill in those gaps. And that way you, that helps with um, not getting warping and not getting distortion in your paper. All right, and I use I use white a uh, white medium weight cardstock. It's nothing very nothing fancy, just the really cheap stuff that you buy at the craft store where they do like card making, scrapbooking, that kind of stuff. It's probably about an 80 pound. I don't have the label anymore, so I can't be sure, but that's probably what it is. That is the the common weight for that product. I'm gonna put this on. I use a nice thick tacky glue because that doesn't distort the paper. The lower the moisture of your glue, the less warping and distorting you're going to get. So I'm going to set this off to the side with probably a bottle of paint, which I know I just moved five bottles of paint out of my way. Well, that one's in. Uh, put my podge on that one because he's bigger. I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to finish gluing these together. When they're all glued together and the glue has dried, I'll come back and we'll start our painting. All right, everything is glued and the glue has dried. So I've got some masking tape here. I'm gonna tape down the little tiny pieces. And I'm gonna take the piece of masking tape that I'm gonna put them on and put it against my jeans. That way it won't be quite so sticky because if not, they could stick to it kind of permanently. 
So I'm going to put that here. Yeah, that's where you guys can see it. And right here I have the nose and I have the two hands. Now you'll notice with the hands there's little fingers and there's a thumb pointing up. And then I have these two pieces which are his shoes. And the rest of the pieces I'm going to put onto my piece of wax paper as I paint them. So let's start with some white paint. And I'm going to have to mix a couple of paints because I don't have some of the colors I want. So I'm going to put some, I'm going to put this also on the corner of my wax paper because I'm going to use that for a couple of different things. And I got my brushes over here in front of me, so let's see what I've got. Most of my brushes. I think I forgot to bring my brushes back from being cleaned last time. All right, so I've got white, and I am going to paint the beard. Now this is going to do two things. Yeah, the beard is already white. Why don't I put him over here so he doesn't make quite so much mess? The beard is already white, but I kind of want the texture from the paint because it'll give a slightly different look to the to it and also because now that I have that on there I'm going to take just the tiniest bit of gray and this is Anita's in rainy day gray and a very small brush I'm going to dip it in the white and then in the gray make some streaks because we don't want his beard to look too white, at least I don't. Then I'm going to take this white paintbrush and there. Now his beard has a little more interest to it. So put this brush over there out of my way. Let's see, I think I should have planned out what colors I was going to make him and I don't have my pink. I'm going to have to turn the camera off and go get my pink paint. I forgot to grab it. I'll be right back. Alright, here's my pink. I have some Anita's in vivid pink. I'm going to put that up there. I'm going to grab another brush. I want to get the sides. And some of these I may need to go back and put a second coat on. I'll do that off camera if I need to, but I'll let you know if I did. All right, so that's that one. Let's get his hat. Let's get a little bit of red. I want that pink brush back. I am going to start the hat with a layer of pink. The sides all covered and I will go back off camera and make sure I've got all the sides done all the edges because not only does this look nicer it helps to kind of seal those layers of paint together Come on. I want that pretty wet with that because I'm going to take another pretty small brush and I'm going to take some red and just make a little bit of a design. Not a real design design, but just, again, a little interest. So it's not just um, pink, not just a solid color. Now the heart, I am going to paint white, paint uh, red. We want that to show up. And you can use whatever colors you want. Uh, there's lots of Valentine gnomes online. If you want to do a, a search for photo for images, there's lots of pictures of Valentine gnomes out there. Now I need a little bit of black. And since these are taped down, they're gonna they will stay put. At least they should. So the shoes are 
on my gnome are going to be black. Now, I don't have any flesh colored paint. I looked and I this is not a color I have purchased since I moved here. So I have a very pale pink, it's called seashell pink, and I have a very pale yellow just called daybreak. And I kind of played around with these a little bit. I do need to get a flesh colored paint though soon because I have a project coming up I'm going to need that for. But I found if I take some white on my brush and I mix these together, I got a little too much of the yellow, so let's get a little. Oh, we'll just steal some of this pink, this pink look. And you can make your flesh tone any color you want to. But that makes a fairly decent flesh tone. All right, I am going to let this paint all dry. I'll do any touch-up painting I need to off camera. And then when that is done, I will come back and we will start assembling our little gnome. See you then. All right, my paint is dried. I'm gonna leave these little pieces right where they are on the tape for now. So I've got my other four pieces that were on the wax paper. We're gonna glue the beard on first. And then we're gonna let that glue set up. Now the only trick here is to center it. You want the tip of the beard just a hair above that flat bottom and center it as best you can on this body piece. And I'm gonna use that same dotting tool to put my glue on and I apologize if you're hearing the neighbors across the hall for some reason they're having very loud conversations in the hallway I don't know why but you guys always get to hear my neighbors between the neighbor upstairs and the neighbor across the hall you guys get to hear a lot of background noise I apologize it just is what it is all right I'm going to now we want this to, the glue to set up because this is going to this needs to stay set where it is. I don't want it to be moving around on me, so I'm going to get it right where I want it, and I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to cover up my glue with that. I'm going to wipe the end of my dotting tool off with a slightly damp paper towel, and I will be back when this glue is set. Alright, the glue on our beard has actually sat overnight, so I know that the beard is not going anywhere. So we're going to fit the hat on. Now I've designed the hat, to, the sides of this bump on the top kind of coincide with the sides of the hat, and then it can kind of lean back against it. So it's really only making contact against the top of the beard and then the top here. So I'm going to put some glue up here and I'm going to put glue on that rim of the hat. That way it gives him a little more dimension. It makes the hat look a little more interesting, I think. I'm going to put just a Bit of glue right there below the hat. Now remember, don't worry too much about glue oozing out because we are going to coat him with Mod Podge so the difference in the textures will not show. Not glued end of my dotting tool to fit this. And since this shape is what I use to cut the, the curve out of the hat, that should snug in there nicely. I'm going to take the big bump of paint off. And we have two shoes. They have a flat line, a flat side, and a curved side. And you can put them anywhere you want down here on the bottom. They'll pretty much cover the bottom edge. You will want to make sure that they are lined up with the base, <clears throat> excuse me, of your note. And I will work on that a little bit more off camera because it's going to be kind of hard to get it lined up without getting my head completely under camera. 
But there you go. I'll let him, I'll get that all lined up the way I want it and I'll let the glue dry because I don't like to have more than those number of things movable as I'm trying to add to the piece. So I'll cover my glue up again, clean this off, make sure he's the way I want him and let him dry and then I'll be back. All right, our glue on those parts has set up. So now we're going to put the heart on in front of our little gnome. This kind of, this bump out here is kind of loosely supposed to be his arm, so I kind of want to have it up in that area. I'm just going to put some glue on the back. So this guy is really 3D here. He's got a lot of depth to him. He's not just flat, which I really like. I hope you guys like this little gnome. I'm I think I said earlier I plan to do different seasonal ones. Now I'm going to let that set before I add his hands because I don't want to, once I get that lined up, I don't want it to move around and I also don't want to get those on in the wrong places. Um, so this only takes probably 10 minutes of set time and then it'll be ready to go on to the next step. So I will be back when that has time to set up. All right, that glue is set up, so now I'm going to pull these off. Do be careful, even though I put this tape against my jeans, it's still, it, they are stuck down. Now, not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but you have little fingers and you have a thumb. So they're made to be oriented like this. Um, I mean, I guess you can put them any direction you want, but that's the way I designed them, was so that they could be held like that. So it looks like he's holding it onto it. So let's put, and you can put the hands anywhere on the heart you want. I do recommend on the edge so it doesn't look like they're just floating, even though they are. All right. Now I just dip my small end of my dotting tool into my glue just to get a little something on the end so I could pick that up. Excuse me if you heard that. There. And you could add some little finger lines if you wanted to, little little lines there to represent his fingers to make that a little more obvious. Now this glue needs to dry completely and then I'll come back and we will put a coat of Mod Podge on him. So I'll be back when he dries. All right, my glue's had time to dry, and I've got a little bit of satin Mod Podge out on this uh, bottom of this container. And I'm just going to give a fairly light, even coat of Mod Podge, um, making sure I seal the sides also. That will help the layers to stay together long term. Kind of sneak it under any of these spots. That way it will help to keep everything together. And I'm also going to do, once the front is dry, I'm going to do the back also. Um, it just makes it a little more finished, makes it a little more durable, and it looks a little nicer. So I'm going to finish this up. When this is dried, we'll go over and put it on the front porch of the dollhouse and see how it looks. I'll see you then. Well, there is our little Valentine gnome sitting right on the front porch of the dollhouse, and I love how he turned out. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure and leave me a like. Leave me a comment. What kinds of things would you like to see in future tutorials? Be sure and go over to the blog post for the downloadable links for the pattern so you can make your own gnome. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you next time. Bye.